The New York Jets finally have a good problem on their hands. That's what offensive coordinator Mike LaFleur told the New York media yesterday. That's what we're talking about in today's Jake Asman show. So let's hit it and get it started. Hit it! Welcome in, everyone. My name is Jake Asman. This is the Jake Asman show. <laughs> The Jets just had one of their greatest wins in the last 20-something years, and we're going to break it all down. Zach Wilson, Robert Sawa, C.J. Mosley, Joe Douglas, Elijah Moore, Jermaine Johnson, Sauce Gardner, Garrett Wilson. I think it's an excellent pick. Super Chat, you cut the line. Smash the like button down below. That's that thumbs up icon. Now, let's talk about the New York Jets. <laughs> Here we go on a Thursday. Thanks for spending part of your day with us here on the channel. My name is Jake Asman. We talk Jets every single day right here on YouTube. So if you're new to the show and you like the Jets, make sure you hit the like button down below, of course. But more importantly, smash that subscribe button. It's on the right-hand side of your screen. Today, I want to talk about some comments that were made yesterday by Jets offensive coordinator, Mike LaFleur. Mike LaFleur, I think, despite the fact the Jets' offense overall last year statistically did not look any good, uh, he did a pretty good job last year, especially after he went up to the coaches' booth. Once everyone you know, decided they were not going to throw him off the Brooklyn Bridge, when the offense started to pick up, when he went up to the coaches' booth and called the plays from there, I think most reasonable Jet fans enjoyed what we saw from Mike LaFleur, we saw some creativity. We saw this offense with three different quarterbacks, really four if you count Josh Johnson, move the football at various points. So I think there's a lot of optimism surrounding the Jets' second-year play caller. And yesterday, DJ Bienemy from the New York Daily News asked a really interesting question to LaFleur about all the talent that is on the Jets' offense. And this was Mike LaFleur responding to that question. I added all these pieces for you. you know, now you got another receiver, two new tight ends, a new running back. So how difficult one to integrate all those pieces? Um, I hope not too difficult, you know, but there is only one ball, and I'm sure we'll have that uh, conversation in the uh, in the room at some point. But ultimately, if you got the right guys uh, organically, uh, it'll all figure itself out, and they'll understand. They, guys just want to move the ball and have success. And, and yeah, you, you want to provide that success, but uh, each and every week could be a little bit different, you know. And, um, uh, you, again, I'll just going to my past experiences uh, in 2016 with Julio, he was going to get a lot of targets, but that ball still got spread around Devontae Freeman, Sanu, and, and Austin Hooper, and we ran the ball well. And then in 19, it was very much different. Our, our starting receivers in the beginning of the year were way different by the time that Debo got going as a rookie to the trading for Emmanuel Sanders to Kendrick Bourne coming on to George Kittle still being who George Kittle was and the top of our run game. Like, it's a very good problem to have. You know, we're, we're, we're young. Guys are still learning how to play. Uh, but we got, we got you know, pieces to work with, and uh, it'll, it'll be fun and a challenge at the same time uh, getting this thing all to mesh together. So I love that. The Jets finally have a good problem on their hands. Juggling their offensive weapons is a very good problem to have. For years, us Jet fans have screamed about the lack of weapons. Now you have members of the media trying to say, well, what are you going to do about having too many weapons? It's nonsense. It's like when you had people in the media complaining, all oh, the Yankees had too many home runs. Who cares? However you find a way to win games is all that matters. And for years, the Jets did not have enough to be able to go out there and win games. Now they do. And this is a very good problem to have, to quote the offensive coordinator for the Jets. Let's not make this out to be a negative. The Jets have not had talent like this in years. The last time the Jets had this much depth on the offensive side of the ball is the 2010 Jets. As talented as they were in 2015, that was a very top-heavy offense. It was Brandon Marshall, Eric Decker, Chris Ivory, and Fitz had a career year. This team has so much more depth than any Jets team we've seen in recent years. You have four legit wide receivers in Elijah Moore, Corey Davis, Garrett Wilson, and Braxton Berrios. Three legit tight ends in C.J. Uzama, Tyler Conklin, and Jeremy Rucker. Three legit running backs, including one I think could be a star right away in Brees Hall, Michael Carter, and obviously the veteran Tevin Coleman. That's your skill position group. 
Not to mention the fact you added a pro bowler left guard who knows the system in Lake and Tomlinson. You're getting a potential pro bowl talent in Mekhi Becton back on this offensive line. George fans coming back. Uh, Elijah Vera Tucker was one of the best rookies in the NFL a year ago. He's now in year two. The Jets' talent on offense is a very good problem to have, and the great coaches figure out a way to make it work. And guys just want to win. I agree with that. You know, you heard LaFleur talk about his experience in Atlanta. Yeah, Julio got the ball, but so did a bunch of the other guys they had in that offense. In San Francisco, they gave the ball to whoever was open. They ran that offense. And I, I was just very encouraged to hear LaFleur speak about the talent and speak about uh, specifically just the weapons that the Jets have. And you know, I'm very encouraged by this offensive coordinator. You're listening to Mike LaFleur talk, and he sounds like a guy that could be an NFL head coach someday. And I'll tell you what, if Zach Wilson takes a leap, another very good problem to have would be if someone hires LaFleur as their head coach. Wouldn't that be nice? When was the last time the Jets had an assistant coach that did so well, they actually got a job as a head coach with a different team? And you can't tell me Todd Bowles, because Todd Bowles was a successful D.C. and then went back to being a D.C. under Bruce Arians and then got that job when Arians stepped down because Tom Brady didn't want him to be the coach anymore. And no one could convince me otherwise. That's exactly what happened there. But that's besides the point. Like Mike Pettin, maybe when Mike Pettin left the Jets and went off to be the Browns head coach, it's been a while, especially an offensive coordinator. So when you hear Mike LaFleur talk, I see a guy that could eventually be a head coach one day if Zach Wilson takes that next step. And then the next thing I wanted to get to here with Mike LaFleur is Mike LaFleur was asked about Zach Wilson's growth. And I thought this answer here was very revealing about the Jets young quarterback. The last, just in the huddle, um, he's so comfortable before I give him a play that he's dapping it up with everybody else, talking to him as I'm saying a play. And that just tells you right there, like he kind of knows what is being said and then can just obviously relate to the guy. So it's, it's been pretty cool from all those uh, angles. I mean, Zach Wilson is taking that leap, that leadership, you know, putting on the weight. LaFleur talked about that, that when Zach is – trying to do something, he's ready, you know, he's able to, you know, kind of go all in and accomplish whatever his goals were set out to be. And really since January, he's been working on his body. A lot of encouraging things here uh, from Mike LaFleur's press conference. But, you know, the, the big thing with LaFleur has got to be they got to start quicker in games, especially early on. There are expectations now with this team. This is a team that obviously has really struggled. Uh, in the month of September, they have not won a game in the month of September since 2018. Like they need to go out there week one against the Ravens, have a great game plan where they're in the game and have a chance to win in the fourth quarter. That's all you could ask for. And I think that's realistic with this much time to prepare for a Ravens team that has a lot of new players, has a lot of players coming off injury. So, you know, the floor talked about how he doesn't even know who they're playing in week two. His focus is only week one. Good. Well, these game plans got to be what we saw in the second half of the year right away. But I was encouraged by what we saw from Mike LaFleur. Was it all great last year? Of course not. I think the Jets were 26th in offense last year. But there was creativity with some of these calls. You know, when was the last time another NFL team tried to copy a play the Jets ran? Remember the playoff game between the Cowboys and the Niners? Dallas tried to run the play that the Jets ran against Miami, where you had the third and long, the completion uh, to Crowder, and then the lateral back to Berrios, I think it was, or maybe it was reverse. Maybe it was to Crowder, then to Berrios, or Berrios to Crowder, whatever it was. Well, the Cowboys tried that same play, and it didn't work. And, and there were moments where the Jets showed real creativity. The Mike White game, the Philly special against Cincinnati, the game against the Colts, where once again, on a third and long, they showed creativity. I mean, th this is an offense that has been stale for so long, and I, I really believe in the offensive coordinator here and Mike LaFleur. I also think this answer here that I'm about to play for you kind of represents why I think Mike LaFleur is eventually going to be a head coach in this league. Look, listen to him break down the nuances of this offense and the decisions that Zach Wilson and other quarterbacks in this offense have to make play in, play out. So how does a quarterback determine where his eyes should be um, basically pre or post now? It's, it's a, such an awesome question because it's, it's, 
there's there's so many different facets within a, a passing game in this league, right? Like you have quick game, you got your kind of your quick hitting drop back, what we call our completion plays. You got your intermediate game where you're going to be taking seven step drops, getting double chips just so your protection can hold up. You got your turn your back play pass game that's going to take your vertical shots. Each play, however many concepts we have, let's say we just have 60 of them. 10 are going to go into each category. How can you make out of those 10? It looks a little to a defense, but seven of those 10 are literally quarterback the exact same play. So your eyes go to the exact same spot. And so as you go through, uh, obviously, full speed OTAs and training camp, yeah, you get the full speed rep because, I mean, that's, that's real football. But that's why the walkthroughs are so important just for a quarterback to train his eyes, to hear the play call, go back to what you learned in the film room, even without the film, the board work, and go through that process of getting my eyes in the right spot. If I'm not throwing a ball over 10 yards, why do I care where the safeties are? No. You just look at number one. If one's open within the timing of what we've taught in our footwork and those routes on air, you throw it to him. If he's not, you progress it too. And then you got to decide as I'm getting down to a check down, pocket collapse, do I run and go make a play, which Zach does very well, or do I get the ball to the check down? That's, that's whatever he's feeling at that moment, any quarterback, because you just never know. It's all going to be a little bit different, you know? So um, it's a good question. It's something that um, I feel like Rob and, and myself and the quarterbacks have uh, really tried to hone in on in terms of being able to group that stuff together for them. So, I mean, that's a head coach answer right there, and you kind of see the complexities of this offense and why it has to become muscle memory for Zach Wilson right away just so he knows you know, where to go with every single decision that he makes from the passing attack. Uh, I've been encouraged, man. I really have been encouraged by what we have heard so far this offseason. You can't make too much of an OTA practice or whatnot, but you can make a lot of what Zach's teammates have said about him, what Mike LaFleur has said about him, what Robert Salas said about him. Like if if Zach Wilson fails, I mean, I'd be surprised. I really would. I think there's there's too much talent around him. I think he's got the right mentality, the right work ethic, and I think he's in a quarterback friendly offense that should help him. You know, like Zach Wilson should be able to go out there and at the minimum be an average NFL quarterback. And I think he could be better than that given his special traits. But those to me were some of the biggest takeaways from the Mike LaFleur press conference. To me, the biggest thing is once again. We went from, well, the Jets had no problem whatsoever with this team to then, uh, or we had you know too many offensive weapons, and then all of a sudden, very good problem to have having too many weapons after you had no offensive weapons. It's like, come on. It, juggling the offensive weapons is a good problem to have. It's not a bad problem to have. You know, last year, it's like, well, they didn't have any weapons. They need to get Zach Wilson help. Now they get Zach Wilson help, and it's like, well, are you worried that you have too many weapons? I mean, come on. This is a very good problem to have for the New York Jets. There's no doubt about it. Let's keep going here. Let's open it up now. Comments, questions, super chats. We'll cut the line. Appreciate all of you for taking the time to watch this video. We'll get to the super chats first. So let's start it off with one that I saw here from Jets Carpetbagger, who says, my favorite video put out by the Jets recently was the interview with Michael Carter. Uh, my favorite video put out by the Jets recently was what we just talked about, the press conference from Mike LaFleur. But I did watch some of that Michael Carter interview. I believe it was with Eric Allen. And, I mean, you can't say enough good things about Michael Carter. What an infectious personality he has. Says all the right things. Immediately reached out to Bryce Hall or Brees Hall. I'm going to make that mistake a ton. I make, uh, you know, reached out to Brees Hall immediately uh, after the Jets drafted him. So, you know, that one-two punch uh, has a chance to be dynamic for this Jets offense. Let's keep going here with your comments, questions, anything else that is on your mind. Devin says, I'm worried about Zach's 11 on 11 performance. Devin, come on, man. It's an OTA practice without pads on. No one, I repeat, no one should be judging anything based on an 11 on 11 performance for what, 10 plays? Who cares? None of this truly matters till we get the training camp. But even then, there's going to be some ups and downs for all players. VR says the Jets are going to induct Revis Brick and Mangold in the Ring of Honor this year. Hashtag salute. Yeah, great story earlier today for those who missed it. The Jets announced that over the course of three separate home games this year, they will be inducting Darrell Revis, Debrickashaw Ferguson, and Nick Mangold in the Ring of Honor. That's as good as it gets right there. That is as good as it gets. Those three guys, 
Revis is up for the Hall of Fame this year. He should get in first ballot, no problem. We all know how great he was. But, I mean, DeBrickashaw and Nick Mangold, those guys were anchors on some of those Jets teams that were routinely in the playoffs and won road playoff games. And we all know how great Brick was. Guy never missed a game in his career, missed one snap on a gadget play. And Mangold, I mean, you know, the Jets, the Jets had a, uh, you know, they – you know, it's a different position. You know, the Niners going from Montana to, to Steve Young or the Packers going from Farb to Rodgers. But, you know, the Jets going from Kevin Mawai to Nick Mangold. It's as good as it gets right there. Uh, VR says, notice who's missing, Sanchez. Look, I love Mark Sanchez, but you're not going to put Mark Sanchez in your ring of honor. He didn't play for the team long enough, first off. And, like, Mark Sanchez was a Jet from 09 to 2013. He didn't play in 2013. He got hurt because Rex put him in the preseason game. Uh, Sanchez is not going to go in the ring of honor. I love Mark Sanchez, but come on. I'm not going to put him in the ring of honor. Jason says, who's under more pressure to succeed, Salah or Joe D? Um, I would say Salah because he's the head coach. And I think most of us look at this roster and say that, you know, Joe Douglas did a pretty good job. So Salah, you know, second year as a coach, brought back his whole coaching staff. I would say he's under more pressure to succeed. Rich says, haven't been this pumped in an effing decade. Well, Rich, I'm excited you're pumped. I'm excited you're pumped. You should be pumped. should be excited. Frankie says, hilarious that the Seattle beat writer said the Seahawks won the Adams trade, LOL. I saw something about that. Uh, I don't think that guy was a beat writer. I think that guy was like a, was like a blogger or like a, you know, a fan that writes for like a, Seattle fan website or something. I mean, that's just laughable. The Jamal Adams trade is one of the worst trades that any NFL team has ever made in history, and the Jets have certainly benefited from it. Uh, DeMar says Sanchez is going in the Eagles ring of honor. Yeah, I don't know about that one. Tyler says, how about that game one ass whooping? Go Rangers. Now go Lightning as much as it pains me. The Lightning clearly, I thought the rest might help the Lightning because they're an older team. It didn't. They look terrible. That is as bad as I've ever seen the Lightning. I will say, just because the Rangers won game one does not mean they're winning the series. The Islanders took game one in Tampa last year against Tampa and then lost to them at seven. So I've seen this before. I still think the Lightning are going to win the series, but... I, you know, I said the Rangers had a legitimate chance. I think there were too many people making this out to be like a David versus Goliath. Like the Lightning are eventually going to lose. I don't think they're going to be like the Islanders in the 80s and win four straight cups. No one's even won three straight cups since that Islanders dynasty that won four. So someone's going to beat the Lightning eventually. And it wouldn't shock me if it's the Rangers, but I do think Tampa Bay will respond and win game two. They're too talented not to. Uh, Bob Plain says Michael Carter showed composure and maturity, very encouraging for a big season. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. Uh, I think Michael Carter has a chance to, to be fantastic playing opposite Brees Hall. VR says Jets media Mangle will be honored on September 21st versus Cincinnati to Brickashaw October 30th versus the Pats and Revis November 27th against the Bears. The Jets win all three of those games. Wouldn't that be nice? If they can only win one of those games, though, give me the Patriot win on the day they honor DeBrickashaw. That'd be awesome. Carly says everyone liked the video while you're waiting. Well, we're live, baby, so like the video as I see our guy here. Everardo says smash the like button. That's right. Likes go a long way, especially in a slower month to help this channel try and grow. Uh, Steven says Mims breakout year. Look, Steven, I'd love to be wrong. I don't think Denzel Mims is on the team week one. I've said this for a while. I think eventually they trade him and he is not one of their top four receivers. He doesn't play special teams. I think eventually they trade him. I'd love to be wrong. I hope he plays so well this summer that he needs to be on the field. I don't know if I buy it. Eduardo says, Jake, you had hoodie on hoodie Allen on yesterday. Can you get Adam Sandler? He's a Jet fan, too. Do it. Don't betray us. I mean, I'd love to have the Sandman on this show. It's not like I just know how to get Adam Sandler, though, on this channel. <laughs> so I'm not betraying you, I don't think, if I can't get one of the biggest movie stars on the planet on the show. But I'd love to do it. Believe me, I'm a huge Adam Sandler fan. Who wouldn't want Adam Sandler on their YouTube show? V-Man says, you hear about the Pats issues with their offensive staff? Also, Mangle should do another grilled episode with Ruckert and Wilson. 
I mean, there's rumblings of that, V-Man. I don't put too much stock into it. Look, I don't think the Patriots are that good, but they still have Belichick, and they're still the Patriots, so the Jets got to prove they're better than them and beat them this year for the first time since 2015. But, I mean, the Patriots' offensive coordinator appears like it's going to be Joe Judge or Matt Patricia. I mean, come on. Benny with the super chat. Thank you, Benny. If you got a question, we'll get to it. Let's see. There it is. Mims is a bigger support system in our fan base than Becton. Shake my head. Becton had an above average rookie season while Mims only showed flashes and couldn't get on the field last year while Davis and Moore were out. Mims couldn't get on the field last year when Davis, Moore, Berrios, and Crowder were out. Tariq Black, DJ Montgomery, and Jeff Smith were taking snaps ahead of Mims. Jets Forever says, Mims not on the team, but Corey is great. Asman, STFU, bruh. Jets Forever, you're wrong about Corey Davis. Corey Davis is way better at football than Denzel Mims. Denzel Mims has never had anywhere close to a year like what Corey Davis has done multiple times in his NFL career. So, please, stop telling me that Denzel Mims is the greatest football player ever. He's not, all right? And the Jets aren't going 17-0, and 0, and Zach Wilson's not throwing for 80,000 yards this year, Jets forever. All right, so get that through your noggin, all right? Corey Davis is a better football player than Denzel Mims, and it is not even close. If this makes you sad, if this is going to make you cry, then I apologize, but you need to hear it. Enough. Denzel Mims is not good at football until he proves he is. Uh, so uh, let's see. Rob says, honestly, I would keep Mims for another year. It The Mims hive in this fan base is just, it's unbelievable to me. It's unbelievable to me. I hope he goes out there and plays great, but the Jets' actions have told you they don't believe in him. If Denzel Mims was legit, they wouldn't have used the 10th pick in the draft on a receiver. I mean, Denzel Mims is a big reason why this team needed to use the 10th overall pick in the NFL draft on a receiver, or they were interested in trading for Tyreek Hill and paying him $30 million, or they were interested in trading for Debo Samuel and then paying him close to $30 million. Jets carpetbagger. With a super chat. Thank you, Carpetbagger. Was it Whitehead that said in his interview that he thought the Jets could be a playoff contender and maybe go to the Super Bowl? So that was DJ Reed. And look, do I think the Jets are a Super Bowl team? I don't. But do I think that they are a team that could obviously surprise and be a playoff team? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I, I, I love the optimism, though, from DJ Reed. I love the fact that you brought in guys that have come from winning programs. DJ Reed was on a Niners team that went to a Super Bowl. Obviously, CJ Uzama was on a Bengals team that was just in the Super Bowl. Whitehead won a championship with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I think that matters, man. I think bringing in guys that have won championships or have played in big games, um, like I, I think that stuff matters. I, I think adding a winning pedigree matters, and I'm very excited about that for the Jets. Kevin says, Whitehead said the secondary could be one of the best. Yeah, Kevin, I'm with you. I, I think the secondary is vastly improved, but when Whitehead said that, I'm like, eh, I don't know about that with the safety play, given what it is. I like Whitehead. They, I don't trust any of the other safeties yet. We got to see what Pinnock could be as a full-time safety. Can the Marcus Joyner stay on the field? Those are questions. That being said, their corner room could be one of the best in the NFL. We'll see how quickly Sauce acclimates himself to the NFL, but DJ Reed is a good player. Bryce Hall is a good player. Michael Carter played well as a rookie. Brandon Eccles made some splash plays as a rookie. It's the most talented corner room they've had in a very long time. New Jersey says the Devils won three straight. The Devils did not win three straight cups. They were not three straight. They won three cups, I believe, but they were not three in a row. Jerry says, I'd keep Mims too. If they keep him, great. But I don't see the scenario where he's playing a whole lot right away unless the Jets get decimated with injuries. Blazing, brazen. I trade Mims for a half eaten pack of now and laters. <laughs> Goodness. Indy Colt with a super chat. Jake, when not against the Jets, do you root for the Texans? And did you see David Carr think the Jets will make the playoffs? I have nothing against the Texans personally. I wouldn't say I root for them, though. Like, them winning 
does not or losing does not impact my happiness. I cover them fairly. I give my honest opinions on them because that's my job on ESPN Radio in Houston to do so. But I uh, I don't I wouldn't say I root for or against. I got some friends that are in in the organization. You know, I know some people that are over there. I like Lovey Smith personally. You know, I like some people in the Texans front office. I've gotten a chance to get to know, but I wouldn't say like I'm rooting for them. Like I'm not living and dying with the result. I prefer them to be good because it's it's more fun to talk about a team that's good than a team that sucked like they have for the last couple of years. But um, I, I like the, the Jets winning and losing directly affects my happiness. The Texans is not. I'm not a Texans fan. I'm a Jets fan. So that's the biggest difference. But you know, I I cover the Texans fairly. You know, I'm not a I'm not a fanboy for them. So when I say something that they do is good, hopefully that matters. And when I criticize them, it's coming from a place where it's like I'm not biased against them. I'm not a homer. Did I see David Carr saying the Jets will make the playoffs? I did. Cool. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm happy for David Carr. I guess that he believes that. I, I don't know if it really matters. I mean, I'm ha- I'm happy he believes in the Jets. It just goes to show you, I could find plenty of national people that believe in the Jets. I could find plenty that think the Jets are going to be bad, like Brady Quinn. So we'll see how it plays out. The Buffalo Jet checks in. Everyone check out the Buffalo Jets channel. I just went on with him uh, earlier today, and I'm doing Matt O'Leary's YouTube show coming up at the top of the hour. So I'm pumped up about that. Big Jet content day for me. Uh, Jake, the grind don't stop. Which D lineman gets cut when we trim down? The final 53. This is an excellent question. Someone's obviously not going to make the team. Uh, I got a lot of guys in that D, D line room. I don't think it's a guarantee Jonathan Marshall's on this team or Nathan Shepard's on this team. I think Jacob Martin is. Uh, Tim Ward might not make this team. Jabari Zaniga probably is cut, if I had to guess. Um, Bradley Anai is still on this team. Those are some guys I could point to. Solomon Thomas probably makes the team. Bryce Huff makes the team. I think Vinny Curry's on this team. One of those guys or two of those guys I mentioned is probably cut. I mean, for sure we know Lawson, Quinnen, Sheldon, JFM, Huff, Curry, Martin, Thomas, and Jermaine Johnson are on the team. And Clemens as well. They just drafted them. So that means Marshall, Shepard, Tanzel Smart, uh, Tim Ward would probably be some candidates to get cut. Uh, let's see. Super chat here from James. James says, Jake, did you see one of PFF writers ranked Jordan Whitehead is the second best box safety in football, only behind Buda Baker and ahead of Jamal Adams. I saw that and I love that. I, I love that. That was, uh, that, that was funny to see. I mean, look, PFF puts out so many different rankings from all their writers. Like, you could find a ranking that has this player as the best, and I'm sure on a different list that player could suck. So always take every ranking, so to speak, with a grain of salt. But look, Jordan Whitehead's a really good player. That was my takeaway. Like, the Jets didn't just sign some guy to play safety. Jordan Whitehead comes in and has a chance to be a really good football player, potential Pro Bowl-level player, um, you know, in this defense. So I'm very excited about Jordan Whitehead. I, I loved the signing at the time. I know there were a lot of Bucks fans that were disappointed when Tampa let him walk, but you can't keep everyone. And Tampa has to pay a lot of other guys. So I'm glad the Jets were able to add him. Eduardo wants me to have Raymond from Everyone Loves Raymond. So Ray Romano, he's a Jets fan. Yes, I'd love to have Ray Romano and, and Kevin James on the show. I'd love to have Sandler, Ray Romano, and Kevin James all on at once. It's hard to make that happen, though, but I'll do my best for you. Uh, Ray checks in from the DR. Thank you, Ray. Love you, brother. DJ uh, Loved what DJ Reed had to say about our team, Go Jets. Yeah, look, the, the Jets brought in a bunch of high-character dudes that come from winning organizations. That's exciting if you're a Jet fan. Rob says, Ty Johnson is 100% gone. Not short about P. Ryan. I think P. Ryan could get cut, too. DMAR says, man, Jake, you got the life getting paid to just talk ball all day. I'm jealous. DMARS, I'm very lucky, man. I'm very lucky. I have a job where I get to talk about my favorite football team here on YouTube or my other favorite sports teams, and I have a job where I get to host a radio show with two other great guys and talk sports, so I'm very lucky. 
Uh, Method Man. He'd be great. Method Man's a real diehard Jet fan. He calls into uh, the Michael K show, I believe, to talk to, uh, to, talk to Don LaGreca one time. Uh, George R. Martin is also a Jets fan. Larry David's a Jets fan. Although I've called fraud on Larry. He also claims he roots for the Giants, too. You can't do that. Pick a team if you claim to be a real fan. D says, love the Hoodie Allen stream yesterday. D, thanks so much, man. Great questions you asked, Hoodie. Uh, for those who missed it, check it out. If you're a fan of Hoodie Allen's music, he's a huge Jets fan. Grew up on Long Island. He was on the channel yesterday. Check out that full interview if you missed it. D. Mars says, Quan Alexander signing would definitely calm a lot of nerves. If they could add Quan Alexander, that would just be like the explanation point to this offense. BR says, I still would want Quan as insurance to teach the young LBs. I agree, especially because you look at the young linebackers the Jets have. They're not traditional linebackers. Hamza and uh, Jamie and Showward are, are converted safeties that were injured last year. Uh, let's see. I think Jets Forever is still very much in his feels about me telling him that Corey Davis is a better football player than Denzel Mims, which is a fact. Matthew says, do you think it's possible that Sauce and Bryce end up splitting reps this season? I, I think Bryce Hall is going to play. They're going to find a role for him on this team, but I think Sauce and DJ Reed are going to start. All right, they didn't draft Sauce Gardner fourth overall to not start opening day. That's just how it goes. What's my prediction on Sauce Gardner's impact in the secondary? Major impact. Major impact on this team. Um, maybe not necessarily right away, but we're going to be talking about how Sauce Gardner is going to go out there and he's going to be a true difference maker in the secondary. DeMar says, did you see Madden ranked Bryce Hall higher than Reed and Sauce? That's, that's just because they're rookies. Once Madden gets a chance to update the roster, they're going to they're, they're, they're going to fix it. They're going to update They're going to update the uh, the rankings. Also, I'm glad that Madden put John Madden on the cover. Jake, how do you envision Hall and Carter splitting snaps? I think Brees is going to get the most of the touches, and then Carter's going to come in on third down, or there might be a drive where they give Carter the chance to be the primary back. Hopefully you feed the hot hand. Jack says, do you think Carl Lawson and Big Q really only play 35 snaps a game? That seems to be a pretty set rule from Jeff Ulbrich, and it's one I don't agree with. You know, if you're only going to limit your defensive linemen to 30 and 35 snaps per game, that to me doesn't make sense. Like, I'm sorry, but Quinn Williams should be playing more snaps than Solomon Thomas or Nathan Shepard. I just, I don't buy that. I think you got to adjust your defensive scheme when you were the 32nd ranked defense in the NFL last year. I didn't love that. You know what I mean? Like if you're if you're Jeff Ulbrich and you have your system, that's great. But you got to be willing to adjust your defensive scheme when you were the 32nd ranked defense in football last year. Do some self scout. Like Carl Lawson, Jermaine Johnson, Quinn and Williams, they got to be on the field. Uh, let's see. VR says Peter Parker can be seen conversing with Matthew Murdoch while clearly and shamelessly sporting a green sweater with an old school New York Jets logo embroidered across the chest. And what Spider-Man was this? Now, in the most recent Spider-Man, we had the Ewing jersey and the Islanders jersey make an appearance in Happy's home. That was good to see. And we know that Spider-Man is a Mets fan in the comic book. So in one of the Spider-Mans, you see Peter Parker's got like a Mike Piazza Mets flag in his room. But is Spider-Man a Jets fan? Nick says, do you think Garrett Wilson will be good right away? I do. I don't think he's going to be elite right away, but I think he's going to contribute right away and be a good player. Uh... Jets Carpetbagger. Jake, what YouTube channel are you a guest on next? That will be Matt O'Leary's channel coming up in about 20 minutes. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm making the rounds this week. And we got some big guests planned for the coming week. Very excited about that. Gary Vanderchuk says he wants to buy the Jets, get him on. I have reached out to Gary numerous times. His people. I've had Gary on my radio show three times. 
But every time I've tried to get him on the YouTube show, I either hear, we'll get back to you, or you never hear anything. So I'm trying to get Vanderchuk on, but his people have not been responsive. I'm working on that. I like Gary Vee. He was very nice when I met him in person multiple times. Denzel Mims is watching. LOL, what a jerk. You try eating bad salmon and see how you feel. Denzel, you should know the playbook, man. I was at a game where right in front of me, you ran out of the end zone against the Jaguars. I mean, what are we doing here? Jennifer Lopez is a Jets fan. Yes, we would love to have J-Lo on the show. We'd sign up for that. Carly writes, Ah, Denzel Mims, can you do us a favor and go 1v1 with our friend Jets forever just for a little experiment you know? Interesting comment there. Arkham says, I wish Thanos was a Jets fan so he could snap out the Patriots from existence. It's another well, well said uh, comment there. Richard says, so Spider-Man and Bobby Boucher are both Jets fans. We need them on the team. Look, I would love to get Adam Sandler on this very show. I don't know how to do that, though. It's not exactly like I could call it the Sandman. Jets forever making another excuse for Denzel Mims. He couldn't learn the playbook last year because he was physically unable to. So what happened week 18 when he still didn't know the playbook, Jets forever? Matthew says, how many free agents do the Jets have room for currently? How many free agents? Um, A lot. If they really wanted to, they could restructure some contracts. I mean, th this is an interesting question, Matthew, because obviously you could bring in as many guys as you want for the minimum. But how many notable free agents? If they wanted to sign Quan Alexander and someone else, they could. That's the type of money they still have left if they wanted to restructure some things. Nate says, Zach stat prediction. Um, I'll say 25 touchdowns, 12 interceptions, and 3,600 yards pass. I don't know. Just throwing that out there right now. I think he's going to take a big leap. I really do. David wants to know, my opinion on which of the three first-round picks is the biggest boom-slash-bust potential. It's a great question. Um, so out of the three, I, I would I think Sauce is – I can't see Sauce not being good. I would be really surprised. So I wouldn't say Sauce. I will say – I'll say Jermaine Johnson. I'll say Jermaine Johnson. I, I think Garrett Wilson is the best receiver at his position. I would say Jermaine Johnson, but I think Jermaine's going to be a really good player too. But he did fall in the draft, so we got to wonder why. And, you know, you're still drafting him based on, you know, a one-year wonder that he had, a one great season at Florida State. So there's less of a track record there with him compared to the other two first-rounders. But I got news for you. I think all three of those guys are going to be excellent. I really believe that. Dark Soldier says, I got the link to contact Sandler's team if you wanted. Did you know he charges 100K to 200K for live speaking events? I got news for you. We're not going to pay Adam Sandler 100K to come on a YouTube show. But if you'd want to come on, we could donate all the super chats, the questions we'd get to him to charity. I think that'd be cool. Uh, let's see. Kelly Wilson says, Jets forever is Denzel Mims in disguise. He might be. He might be. I'm actually think I actually think it's possible. D. Mar says Rihanna's a Jets fan too. She shouts them out in a song. Yeah, she didn't mention the '68 Jets once in a song. Jets Forever says y'all really believe Corey Davis is elite. I no no one at any time has ever said Corey Davis is elite. Corey Davis is a solid number two wide receiver. Elijah Moore and Garrett Wilson will both be better players than Corey Davis, but Corey Davis is a solid pro. Denzel Mims is not. Your love of Denzel Mims makes absolutely no sense. It's nonsensical. Budster says, everyone tweet Zach Wilson. Get him on the show. Blow up his Twitter account. That's the number one guest we want on the show. We want Zach on the show ahead of training camp, talking all things Jets, and every super chat will go to charity. Cyber says, Jake, who's your favorite player to watch going into camp? Uh, 
I would say my favorite player to watch going into camp is Zach Wilson because the season hinges on his year two growth. And I think all the signs so far have been positive. Benny says, if the Jets win the Super Bowl this year, I'm getting our logo tattooed on my forehead. V- Benny, I hope you have the opportunity to do that. That'd be It means it was a hell of a year for the Jets. Mike McCagden is watching as well. Horrible draft. Jets should have drafted Jordan Davis at four, Brisker at 10, and traded up for Hamilton. Clueless organization. Mike, I'm glad you're not making the decisions anymore. Because that is exactly what the team would have done if you were calling the shots. Tyler says, Jake, how could you give up on Mims so quickly but not Becton? One, Becton played as a rookie and played way better than Mims did. Makai Becton, when he was out there, graded out as one of the better tackles in the sport. Two, Makai Becton was the 11th pick in the draft. Denzel Mims was a second-round pick. There's just different, uh, like, there's just different level of expectations between the two players. And Makai Becton was playing last year as a starter, and then he got hurt because his own teammate rolled up into him. Denzel Mims wasn't on the field week one until the game was out of reach, and they put him out there for a couple plays late against Carolina. Jason says, Connie Scouts is a huge Jets fan. When are you having her? Hopefully soon. We'd love to get Connie on the show. She's one of the guests we were supposed to try and have on before the draft. Schedule-wise, it didn't work out, but we will definitely get the first female scout in NFL history. The great Connie Scouts on the show. PJ says, I'm not going to lie, Jake. The number one person I want to see on the show is Rex Ryan. Well, PJ, you're in luck because I'm not going to tell you when, but Rex Ryan could be, crossing my fingers here, a future guest on the show. Block says, who do you think will be Zach's go-to man this year? Elijah Moore. And on third down, Braxton Berrios is going to make a ton of tough catches. If Davis and Mosley have a good, not great year, do you cut them in 23? Davis could be off the team depending on what Garrett Wilson looks like. Mosley, it's a wait and see because they just don't have a lot of depth at linebacker right now. Jerry says it's all about Zach and coaching growth this year. I agree. Totally agree. Ray says, let's give Jake more likes, people. Love America and love the show. Yeah, smash me. uh, Smash that like button down below. And by the way, We are going to be announcing the winner real soon of who is going to be receiving another Jets jersey, courtesy of BUSR. BUSR is my official sports book. If you're not betting on sports with BUSR, you're missing out. You're going to find better odds at BUSR than at other sports books. You could place future bets. You could interact with live customer support at any given time. It's live 24-7. A lot of sports books don't have that. It's BUSR.com slash Asman to sign up. You could bet on hockey, NBA Finals start tonight. I'm picking the Warriors, I believe, in six, but I don't feel great about that pick. Check it out. It's busr.com slash asthma. Do a couple more here, and then we'll wrap up. VR says, here's someone that's been making the rounds lately, Mike Westoff. And who was the first Jet YouTuber to have Mike Westoff on their show this offseason? This guy. We had a great interview with Mike Westoff. Uh, a couple months back. Check that out if you missed it. He was excellent. Famous Jay says, I want George R. Martin on the show to talk about season eight of Game of Thrones. I want him on the show to to ask him why it took him so long to write the ending so the writers for Game of Thrones on the TV show didn't ruin it by destroying Game of Thrones with how they ended the show after season eight. I'm still upset about how they took an all-time show and totally soiled it with its last season. I don't know if there was ever a worse season of an all-time great show quite like the last season of Game of Thrones. Christopher says, Rex Ryan ruined the Jets those last few years when he got them drafting Kyle Wilson, Calvin Pryor, Copels, and signing Wayne Hunter. Uh, Look, Rex was not the GM. So Mike Tannenbaum and John Isaac have to bear responsibility for those picks, not just Rex. Also, pretty good day for Mike Tannenbaum when... The three players he drafted in 06 and 07 in Revis, DeBrickashaw, and Mangold are all going to the Ring of Honor this year for the Jets. DeMar says, I see Conklin as a huge target for Zach. Absolutely. 
Nick H says, I don't think Jets Forever has ever missed a stream. Now, Jets Forever, he might be a robot, but he's a loyal robot, and we appreciate his support, even though I think he's nuts thinking that Corey Davis is a somehow a worse player than Denzel Mims. Uh, Jimmy says, CJ Mosley is a keeper. He makes a lot of money, though, so sometimes you got to look at the salary cap ramifications of keeping him next year. We'll see what type of year he has. Maybe he could restructure his deal. We'll, we'll see. You know, CJ Mosley's got to stay healthy. Damian Woody can get Rex on for us. Damian Woody hopefully will be coming on this channel soon. He's another guy that I've reached out to that we're working on timing. Do a couple more here. Super chat here from Gladdy. Thank you so much, Gladdy. Thanks for the content, Jake. Love the show. Gladdy, I appreciate you. This channel would not be possible without the support from so many great fans of the Jets. Kelly says a lot of people hated the ending of Lost. I never saw the ending of Lost. I never saw Lost in general, so I can't comment on that. But, I mean, I don't watch a ton of TV shows, but some of the shows I have seen are like the all-time shows, like Sopranos and Breaking Bad and, and, and so on and so forth. And the ending to Breaking Bad to this day pisses me off. I mean, they ruined the show. We are still upset about season eight of Game of Thrones. D. Mars says, Fireman Ed just got on IG. His videos make you want to run through a wall. D. Mars, if you missed it, we had Fireman Ed on this channel a couple weeks back. Check that out. Jason Picker say, or J says, Seinfeld's final season was bad. And the finale was absolute trash. Yeah, but Seinfeld's a little different. It was a sitcom. It was a show about nothing. How do you end a show like Seinfeld? So I'm not going to give them a pass for it completely, but it's a different type of show. When you're talking about a drama like Sopranos or Game of Thrones or Breaking Bad, you're talking about like the all-time level show. You got to end those shows the right way. And what they did with Game of Thrones was just such trash. Block says, do you think Rutgers is going to get playing time? I do. I absolutely do. Big Green says, Obi-Wan is doing well. Who has seen Obi-Wan so far? Incredible. Incredible. I was giddy watching the third episode of the series. The only thing I'm pissed about with that show, it's only six episodes. They couldn't give us ten. But, man, I have loved Kenobi so far. I think it's been awesome. There are a couple of plot holes, maybe, that are, you know, that you could sip through and you could point at, but... I've been a fan of the Kenobi show. I mean, Obi-Wan was my favorite Star Wars character. So to see, you know, you and back on the screen was awesome. Jets Forever 2.0 checks in. MetLife is the best stadium in the NFL. No debate. You know you're doing something right when you have a troll for Jets Forever, who is a troll. Uh... Matthew says, Kenobi is hot trash. Well, you can't please everyone. Rob says, Jake, do you play any golf? I don't. I don't. My dad's in the golf industry. He makes the number one umbrella on the PGA Tour, the Gus Buster. And I follow golf casually, but I don't play. I stink. Eduardo says, I hate Kenobi. It sucks. What don't you like about it? Jimmy G says, what about that new Madden cover? Shout out to John Madden. Making the cover. Block says, how big of an impact do you think our tight ends will have? A massive impact. They're going to run a lot of 12 personnel. Zach's completion percentage is automatically going to be higher because of the fact he is throwing the football to Uzama, Conklin, and Rucker. Those are legit tight ends. Big Green says, Boba Fett was trash. Mandalorian is good as well. Mandalorian is excellent. I think it's the best piece of content Star Wars has ever created. Now, it's not a movie. It's a TV show, but it's that good. Famous J, Obi-Wan is okay so far. I am surprised by this reaction. I figured it'd be way more positive. I really enjoyed it. I think it's been excellent. Maybe I'm too much of a Star Wars homer. I don't know, but I hated the new trilogies. Like, if I think something's terrible, I'll tell you. I really have liked the new Obi-Wan show so far. Uh, Ray says, Jake, can you bring back Fireman Ed? Absolutely. Matt O'Leary with Jake next. Let's go. That's right. That's why I got to wrap up the show right here. I appreciate all of you for taking the time to watch. Hey, if you want to really help and support this channel, 
please hit the like button down below. It goes a long way towards more people discovering this type of content. You also could subscribe to the show. Just hit the subscribe button on the right-hand side of your screen. And I'm trying to grow my Twitter audience. I live tweet about the Jets all the time. So if you want my instant reaction on anything Jets-related, NFL-related, New York sports-related, follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Jake Asman. Appreciate all of you for watching. Thanks for tuning in. We'll have more Jets content, of course, throughout the week. My name is Jake Asman, pronounced Asman, as in Jasmine. Appreciate all of you for taking the time to tune in. Have a good Thursday, everybody, and I'll be back with more content soon. So long.